The Big Three, a way for fans to separate the best from the untouchable. For there to be a Big Three, there has to be a clear separation from the pack. There is more talent than ever when it comes to jumping and dunking. I think this has to be like the golden age of dunking. This is the decade where training to jump higher is actually a common thing. 50 inch verticals are becoming normalized, 10 year olds are dunking, the bar just keeps getting raised. I feel like after this era, everyone's gonna start pumping steroids and stuff to jump higher, and everything will fall. Or like we'll have some next genetic modified stuff that can enhance our performance. But for this video, it doesn't matter how much talent is out there. Because at the end of the day, there can only be three and the big three, which only I can declare. The three are Jordan Sutherland, Isaiah Rivera, and Jordan Kilgannon. Before we start though, I did make a change to how I scale and rate each individual. It was actually one of my comments that convinced me to make this change. So we got rid of the height stat and replaced it with versatility. The height stat kind of makes no sense because there are pluses and minuses to being taller or shorter. And the ideal height is somewhere in the middle anyways where you can have as much reach as possible without losing as much bounce. I was counting versatility and technique as the same stat, but I think it was good that I separated them. This makes a lot more sense now. So here are the new ratings from episode 1. Anthony Hamilton is a 7.4. Chris Bell is a 7.2. And Tyler is an 8.2. Comment if you agree with the new rating system. And now let's start with the big 3. Jordan Sutherland is the best one foot dunker we've ever seen. That's a fact, not even my opinion. Most people opt for two foot jumping. Usually it's the distance jumpers that go for one foot. Although he is good from distance, with some impressive free throw line dunks, don't underestimate his vertical ability. He also has a unique bag that only one foot dunkers can access. And even more, which only he can access. Which is why I give him a 9 out of 10 for versatility. For technique, I give him a 10. All of his dunks just look smooth. Nothing seems off. Perfect score. For weight, I gave him an 8. He's pretty shredded. For elasticity, I gave him a 9. To be a one foot jumper, you already have to be super elastic. But I don't even know. This guy is just different. For rate of force development, I gave him a 7 out of 10. Which is his lowest stat, but it's to be expected because he is a one foot jumper. This gives him a score of 8.8 .8 out of 10. Next is the world's highest jumper, Isaiah Rivera. To be honest, I didn't think he would be the one to achieve the world's highest vertical. With a 51 inch vertical, showing no signs of slowing down, it's hard to say, but I think he still has potential. Unlike most dunkers, Isaiah mainly focuses on powerlifting. He believes in getting as strong as possible to jump as high as possible. And his methods seem to be working, as he has the highest rate of force development to weight ratio I've seen out of anybody. For weights, I gave him 8 out of 10. I think he weighs about like 185. And for rate of force development, I gave him 10 out of 10 because he can squat, I think, like twice his body weight. No, more than that. The lankier you are too, the lower the ratio should be. And the fact that he's pretty lanky and his ratio is still higher than most people, it shows a lot. For technique, I gave him 9 out of 10. I would have gave him that 10 out of 10, but he, I think he has the same problem as me because he doesn't fully push out on his penultimate. Like mine is way worse, but... I noticed that with him too that his penultimate isn't like he doesn't fully push out like most other of the pro dunkers. It's hard to do it when you're going for specific dunks, but Chris Staple does it the best even though he's dunking at high velocities. Which is Isaiah's weakest stat in my opinion. I would categorize him more on the strength side of jumping. He definitely muscles through his jump more than most people. So for that I would give him a 7 out of 10. Anything with distance or off of one foot is not his strong suit. That's okay because with how high he jumps, he doesn't need it. He still has an arsenal that no one else can have. Because he jumps so high, his 360 kamikaze looks easy to him. So for versatility, I would still give him a 9. You might not agree with me on this one, but he still has a bag. I don't see anybody doing the dunks that he's doing. And so his overall rating is 8.6 out of 10, which is just under Jordan Sutherland. I think soon enough he will be better. But for now, in my opinion, he's just behind him. And just remember that right now he spends more time in the weight room than he actually does jumping. Once he's done his 5 year training arc, I think he'll be a lot better. I definitely think next year he will be a certified 90 overall. Last but not least, we have Jordan Kilgannon. The one who proved to the world that white men can jump. I'm gonna start off with technique because we already know that's a 10 out of 10. I don't even have to see him jump. Once he takes off, you already know it's a big jump. It's smoother than butter. And he takes off pretty fast. 
and his versatility is just as good. He's always coming up with new stuff even if it looks so ridiculous. He will try almost everything and anything. It's also rare to see him miss dunks. So he's starting off strong with a 20 out of 20. Now for rate of force development, I've never seen him lift ever. I know he does but he probably doesn't show it. If I had to guess though, I would probably say 7 out of 10. For elasticity, I would give him 8 out of 10. I mean I don't really have to explain why. And for weight, I gave him 9 out of 10. He might not be the strongest but he makes up for it with his super light weight. I'm sorry y'all but I'm breaking the scale on this one. He's the best technical dunker there is. I just don't think a 10 out of 10 is enough. He's the dunk king. I'm giving him that 11 out of 10. Making him the best of the big 3. Giving him a 9 out of 10. Making his overall a 90. The first and only 90 we have right now. So in third place we have Isaiah Rivera with an 86 overall. In second we have Jordan Sutherland with an 88 overall. And in first place we have Jordan Kilgannon with a 90 overall. Hey man, don't hate the player, hate the judge. So I first recorded this video almost half a year ago and a lot has changed since then. I don't even know why it took me so long. People like the first video got like 5k views, but it had tons of comments and engagement. Even the man himself engaged with the video, but yeah, I'm making it now. There has been a new contender in the big three though. I first started seeing him in like 2023, but now he's like really made a name for himself. Uh, Donovan Hawkins, this guy is, he's just crazy. This guy just punches everything, whether it's a tomahawk or if it's a double East Bay. Like this guy could just, his head is always above the rim. This guy just surpassed everyone faster than Gohan in the cell arc. Yeah, but let's just rate him to see where he stands before we make any claims. Remember though, I am the judge. For rate of force development, I would give him a 9 out of 10. He's pretty insane when it comes to his force outputs. Like his squats is like, his squat is like three, 300 something pounds and he can do it pretty easily. I've never even seen his max before, but it's probably in the four plates realm or something. But it's, I would compare it, like he's comparable to Jonathan Clark, the jumper when it be, when it comes to weightlifting. Number output, like they're just number output freaks. It's, it's crazy. Give him an eight out of 10. Uh, I think he's overall com comparable to Isaiah Rivera in terms of the way he trains and stuff like that because they both did do THP. So it, it like pretty much makes sense, but I still think he's a little more elastic and yeah, so that's why I'm giving him an 8 out of 10. For weight, I would give him a 7 out of 10. He has crazy force outputs, but that's also because he weighs a lot too for compared to most jumpers, right? I think he's like, when I first started seeing him, he was like 200 something pounds, but I seen a video post he was like 215 pounds or 19, I don't remember, but that's a crazy weight for a jumper. Like, I'm so... I'm not even sure because I don't know him personally, but like his knees probably be hurting a lot. I don't know though. If it was me, my knees would be hurting. If I pass even like 185, my knees are hurting a lot, but everyone's different, I guess. Now for versatility, I'm conflicted to give him an eight or a nine. Cause on one hand, he can do a lot of dunks, but on the other hand, he doesn't really have, like I've never seen any like original bag. You know what I mean? Like a lot of these guys, I think nine and 10, to get a nine and 10, you have to have like an original bag. Like you have to have your own unique dunks. I'm not sure if he has any, like I see him do, doing common dunks, but like he does them really well, if that makes sense. So for versatility, I think I would give him an eight out of 10, but for technique, I would probably give him a nine or a 10. I think I am um, yo, that's hard. So versatility, we're locking in the eight, but for technique, I would say, I would give him an overall of nine out of 10, giving him a 90 overall. This ties in with the great himself, Jordan Kilgannon. It might be too early to call it, but I think he just might be the best dunker right now. Even if you look at the last dunk camp, he was just going crazy. Like in my opinion, he was the best one there. And if you say otherwise, then I don't know, man. Let me know if you agree with my top five list of dunkers. If not, I guess you're entitled to your opinion, but. And if you like the thumbnail, I drew that. I drew that. I went ham on that. I don't know. I picked up drawing again. As you probably noticed, but I used to draw all my thumbnails, but then I stopped drawing. But then I got back into drawing and somehow I got better. But yeah. And I am starting uh, an art page as well on my Instagram. And I think I might make a YouTube for that too. But now I have a lot of YouTubes going on. But I don't know. I think it'll all come together. But yeah. Uh, thanks for watching and enjoy the next video. If you agree or disagree with any of my opinions, well, you're wrong, but you can still comment and I'll see 
if they're justified or not. And for those of you who are going to say, why is nobody like a 99 overall or Jordan should be a 95 or whatever? Nah, man. No, nobody's that high yet. I still don't think that we have seen the full potential of what a human can do jumping. I mean, the sport is just getting started. We got to leave room for the future generations, you know? If we make these guys at 99 overall, what's the next generation going to be like? 105 overall? We got to save space for the future. I'm still unsure which topic I want to do next. We could make a video on the OGs. Actually, let's vote. We could do the 2010s or we can focus on the NBA dunkers. Comment which one you want to see next.